Telecom TV, where ICT connects. Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick, reporting from Broadband World Forum in Amsterdam, and I'm talking with Marcus Weldon, who is the CTO of Alcatel Lucent. Marcus, good to see you again. We um, spoke a little earlier today, and I was very amused and intrigued to see the bereft look on your face when someone <laughs> took away your iPad. What was all that about? Well, you know, uh, the iPad is, is sort of my portent of the future. It's, it's not only a, you know, a, a visual thing where you can see uh, into it, if you like, and, and consume media, but to me it represents how technology is going to change, and I'll explain a little bit why. The thing about the iPad is it's an inherently wireless device. No Ethernet ports, only wireless. It's also a relatively large screen device. So it's going to send you sort of higher bitrate video where you're going to want to consume higher bitrate video on it. But because it's a mobile device, a wireless device, it has constraints on power, cost, uh, and storage. Uh, so as a result, it can't process or store everything you'd like to store on it. So if I want it to be that device that is everything to me, which I clearly do, <laughs> uh, I need to connect it to the cloud. And in the cloud would be the media, the processing resources, the content I want to access and it'll be delivered to the cloud, which will be my viewing portal. So my portal to the future into the cloud is what my iPad becomes. So you can think of it as, in many ways, so the idea could be in the end, the iPad doesn't have anything on it. You can just repurpose it and re-image it based on the cloud. So I can take anyone's iPad and make it my own. And you've got this sort of ubiquitous nirvana that comes with that. But the other thing about the iPad is it combines home behavior and enterprise behavior, because everyone, so fell in love with their iPad at home, doing all those things you can do on a wireline network. You took it to work and said, well, I, w I want to use it there because it's a great device which I can use uh, productively. So it starts blending uh, enterprise and home. And then, of course, on the go is in between those. And again, you take it to Starbucks, you take it on the train. So it's this de device that really converges the user expectation around wireless, because it's a wireless-only device, and the capacity it needs to connect to the cloud and deliver media and content is much higher because it's that large form factor screen. So it's really a transformational device for networking and for the user experience in general. Well, I must say, you did look aghast when it was taken away from Horrified. you. Horrified. Horrified. <laughs> As I said, I would rather give up a child than my iPad. Marcus, let's move on. A lot of the emphasis here at Broadband World Forum is on, of course, the cloud, SDN, and NVF. I want to ask you a couple of questions about that. Um, look, SDN and NFV are disruptive at every level because they require change at every level, from staff skill sets through to process re-engineering, customization, organizational culture, new OSS capabilities, and so on. How on earth are service providers a network operator is going to cope with it? It's a tremendous challenge. Uh, you're quite right is that the operational transformation is probably the most difficult part because technologically uh, there are systems, cloud orchestration systems, SDN has been around a little bit uh, in the data center and in fact the way we do SDN and Alcatel is, is very telco networking like IPMPLS enabled, BGP enabled, so it feels very comfortable technologically to a service provider. However, the big change is the operational change. Mm. You have to take uh, your IT group, who typically was in the CIO organization, who manage things running on virtual machines and blend them with the network group who used to manage the network because those two things are no longer separate. The network is now running in the cloud. And so you have to take two teams with different skill sets, different mentalities, different design principles, and merge them into a holistic whole to operate this new network. And that's probably the largest challenge an operator is going to have, not the technology, uh, probably not the, the growth opportunity that comes with that technology. I think they'll find, you know, new business models that go with these technologies, which is great, yep. but it's actually the uh, organizational transformation they have to undergo that will be one of the uh, rate limiting steps in deploying these technologies. I mentioned OSS and you didn't respond directly to that. Let me put it again to you. Look, OSS is a mess, mm -hmm. is it not? It's yes. just this mishmash spaghetti mess, okay? And what effect is SDN and NFE going to have on that? Well, it is going to transform it. You're absolutely right. I didn't answer it because it's too difficult a question for me. But, <laughs> but actually, no, you're quite right. In fact, there's work in the uh, Etsy Working Group, NFE Etsy Working Group, on the next-gen OSS, uh, where they're going to define it sort of as a cloud OS. 
uh, but it has to tie to the legacy system. So the way I think about it personally is, you can imagine managing the virtual machines and the storage and the networking inside the data center in the new OS, because essentially that's the job of the new OS. But its other job is to connect to the old OS, which managed the wide area network. And so those systems are in place and no one's going to throw them out. They've got to sort of be, be updated so they can inter interface with the new OS. And then over time, as you deploy virtualized systems in the WAN, outside the data center, uh, you'll, you'll find that some of what we think of as the legacy network actually becomes incorporated into the new OS, new OS naturally. So there'll be this phase where the, initially the cloud OS manages just stuff inside the data center uh, and connects to legacy outside. But then gradually as legacy migrates to virtualized new high capacity systems with open flow interfaces, the two will become more seamlessly connected as part of a new cloud OS. So that's how the mess gets fixed. It's going to take probably 10 years to fix it. Uh, but in that mess is the answer to seamless onboarding, rapid service development, simple management, low operational cost. And so in that mess is the answer. Now I will point out that telco operators aren't the only ones with the mess. I happen to know a number of the web scale companies have hundreds of OSs themselves because they've developed these as Skunk Works projects, sure. et cetera, which yeah. weren't required to leverage the prior OS, so they developed their own OSs to manage, say, the data center interconnect network or their data center network, and multiple of those. So the problem is actually a little more universal than just service providers. We need to find one unified OS across the different types of service provider which can interface and create a holistic service experience. Which leads me, Marcus, nicely onto my next question, which is about standards. Where are we in the evolution of SDN and FE standards? You mentioned Etsy just now. There's the ISG, of course. Where are they? Well, uh, the Etsy ISG, actually, of course, is trying to point to other standards. What it's really doing is pointing to sort of best practices and existing standards. Mm -hmm. So, so they don't. They have a schedule of working through to define the reference architecture and point to other standards, but the standards per se are some, going to be someone else's, like OpenFlow, OVSDB, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. So I think uh, in those other fora, as you know, uh, OpenStack is constantly adding capability. So it's really a case of, you know, initially it was about just compute and storage and they added networking capabilities and there'll be security capabilities, et cetera. So I think it's a case of there will be no data which standards are done, but you will take a release of a standard, which is a little bit different. Mm. I guess 3GPP does some of this, right? But the releases are every 18 months, which yeah. makes it feel like there's an end date and then the new start date and a new end date. But I think with the web world, the standards are evolving much more rapidly than that. So you'll take releases that are evolving every few months instead. And, th and that process will be continuous. And then it's a case of you integrate that release, you release that as part of a cloud band system that we sell, you make your, ne your networking uh, equipment that supports that release. Uh, and then you refresh that every uh, few months. So, so I think uh, it's going to be a faster, maybe the way to say it is a faster standardization cycle because it's a little bit more do what works, deploy what works, as opposed to consensus-based standards. Uh, so I think that's going to be the big change, not the absence of standards and not uh, necessarily that there's going to be a different sort of end date or, or standards methodology. It's more speed and acceptance that contribution to open source and what works works rather than consensus driven standards. I think that's the change. A final question to Marcus if I might. Will NFV become the biggest enabler of cloud networking and SDN services? And if so, what impact will that have? NFV will certainly be the biggest enabler of dynamic, scalable networking in the telco domain. Uh, and as I said, uh, the telco networking technologies are appearing inside the data center as well because the way they support multi-tenancy and QOS and security, uh, those, those attributes are becoming important inside the data center. So you could argue virtualization of network functions and the networking technologies that come with those will dictate the, the evolution of networks. And, and actually those networks are, whether it's web scale data center networks, enterprise, data centers or telco networks, the combination of network function virtualization and networking technologies from the telco domain uh, will actually define the future of networking and have a profound impact on the industry. In return, of course, web scale 
and IT systems are giving the virtualization techniques in cloud orchestration layer systems that complement that. And you could argue that they started with, the first version of SDN was from that domain. Yeah. SDN is now being improved by adding telco technologies, so it's sort of a bit of a hybrid now. Yeah. But a combination of IT virtualization, telco networking, and virtualization of those telco functions to provide dynamic scale, and, and you've got the future. Marcus Weldon, thanks for giving us this time. Thanks very much, Martin. Telecom TV, where ICT connects.